Welcome back everybody. I think this is part three of the doors video. You can see here I have the hinge completely riveted up here and I did add some primer behind there and the back side of the hinge before I riveted it, but that's done. The outside gussets are drilled and clecoed in place. These corner pieces are in. Now it's time to remove the door and drill and install and rivet the inside gussets. Now you might remember I said that this pin gets split into two pieces and put in from the center. And eventually I'll do that. That's why I cut the loops off of the hinge. But for now, because the front windshield isn't installed, it's easier just to keep it as one piece. Now you see how when I set this on the workbench, it doesn't sit flat? That's good. That's how you want it. Now if I take this piece of wood right here and put it under the front, the bottom front corner, now look, it sits perfectly flush on the table. Well, I just have the door sort of leveled on the workbench and I'm just putting each of these corner gussets in the proper location. Now this one here and the next one, again, are the ones you want to pay special attention to because these are the ones that have a bend in them and you'll need to put those on correctly. Once I position them, I line up the outside edge with the square tube and then I clamp it in place and then I'll drill the holes. This corner is now done, and I will do the same thing three more times, each of those corners. Well, now is when I want to get these parts fully ready to rivet. So I'll peel off any of this blue protective plastic that's on there. Or if you have uh, the identification labels still on, I peeled all those off, cleaned them up, deburred the holes, and I use a file to clean up all of the edges. The machine does a pretty good job of cutting these out, but sometimes it leaves a few marks on there I like to smooth out. After that's done, I'll take it over to the Scotch-Brite wheel and polish all of the edges that I can reach with this wheel. I'm also doing the best I can to deburr the holes inside the square tubes. I might not get them perfect and I might not be able to reach all of them, but the ones I can reach, I like to file off. You might want to shoot a light coat of primer on your parts. I did on mine. And now all four corners are ready to rivet, which is the most fun part. Well, once the inside gussets are riveted on, the door is almost done. I'm putting it back on the fuselage now because I want to check the opening and make sure it clears, especially on the back part. Now, one of the spots you might want to pay attention to is this very back inside corner. Because when you open the door, notice how that will kind of come down and it could start to hit uh, the back here. On my other side, I had to file that corner away a little bit, and it looks like on this one, it, I'm probably gonna file a little bit away there too, because it looks like it might just slightly rub. So you might wanna check that on your door. Well, I slightly beveled that back corner, and now it's perfect. It comes close, but it doesn't hit. So now the doors can open up. You'll notice when they close, they sit flush with the 
if you just push them in here because the center of gravity is out here. But if you just push them in like this, you can see they are uh, flush with the outside of the fuselage, which is nice. So that part of the doors is complete. And I think the next step is we will mount this bracket here for the door handle. Now I found the best way to position these brackets for the door latch is to actually have the door on the frame so that it can be centered up on the flat part of the door. So I'm using the door sort of as a template to locate those parts. All I did was draw two little marks on each end of the bracket and I'm just putting a flat piece under it so that it's flush with the outside of the door. I'll use a sharpie to mark the two outside hole locations and I'll drill those. Once those are drilled I'll put Clecos in and I can drill the center hole and then those brackets are installed. All right, this is as far as I'm going to go with my doors at this time. You can see both doors are on here. They both swing nicely. I have the um, plates here, clecoed in place for the door handle, but I want to wait until I have these door seals riveted in place with the rubber trim on it and the front windshield installed with the metal Z bend piece that goes up here. I want to make sure all the pieces are there before I really start fitting these door latches because I want to make sure it's a nice good fit. What I do want to do in the meantime though is get all of these parts prepped and powder coated. I did spend quite a bit of time on a scotch Bright wheel going around all of the edges and smoothing them out and kind of rounding the corners a little bit. So these are pretty much ready to go for powder coating. Now one of the things you might want to do before you take these in for powder coating is just make sure that they do fit onto your, your door handles like that. Uh, you'll see this square piece here goes inside this square piece. Mine happened to fit perfectly, but I do remember on my cruiser, I had to take a file just a little bit and file a little bit of that to get it to fit in there. Now, once you get these powder coated, you are going to have to scrape out the powder coating that's going to be in that square because it's going to obviously fill up that space. Same with these ones here, these front latches. There's a, you know, a, a certain size hole there that goes on your key here. Both of mine fit perfectly, but you might just want to try it before you send them in for powder coating, just in case you do have to file them. On my cruiser, I had all of these parts powder coated red and on my Super Duty, I'm going to do them in yellow as I think that goes kind of goes better with the, the army green. Now, since I'm done with the doors for now, I got to figure out what my next step is. And what I'd like to get done is remove this steel cage and prime it and paint it. I could prime and paint these pieces up here and then once those are painted, I could get all of this riveted on. I could put the instrument panel back in. And then after that, I think it's ready to start wiring and mounting all of the avionics. The problem is I just don't feel like painting right now because I have to move the pits out of the hangar. I have to move the cruiser out of the hangar. I have to put up all my curtains again for the, the makeshift paint booth. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I really should do that so I can get this done and riveted and kind of move on. Uh, but I'm also running out of painting weather too. In Michigan here, it's starting to get a little bit cool. I've probably got a little bit of time yet, but not much time uh, before it starts getting pretty cold. All right, I have come up with a perfect solution since I'm too lazy to sand this frame down and paint it. I will just have it powder coated, <laughs> simple. What I'm going to do is I will, I will have it powder coated the same satin black that I have the rudder pedals and my seat frames, which obviously aren't in the airplane. So I can get this powder coated and that will finish that up. And then as far as these pieces here, which are the upper parts of the doors, I'll paint those 
later because I don't need to have those painted right now. But getting this powder coated will finish this up. And if I'm going to drop off the door latches, I might as well drop this cabin frame off at the same time. Now to give you guys a little sneak peek of what's coming up, it's time to start working on all the Dynon avionics here. So you guys know that Aircraft Specialty had already cut out a panel for me. And I have a Garmin IFR certified GPS and then obviously everything else in the panel here is Dynon. I have the two Dynon screens. I'll have an autopilot in this airplane, uh, the engine monitor, just a whole bunch of stuff here. I have two outside air temperature probes, which I think I'm going to mount right on the side of the fuselage. I think that's where Zenith has theirs mounted on their Super Duty and uh, that should work just fine. So once I do get that frame back from powder coating and I rivet it in and install it, then I can put the panel in, mount all of the avionics in the panel, and then start running all of the wires and cables that connect it all together.